<laughs> back again. Oh man, I'm so happy to see every one of you, every single one of you. If I don't mention your name or whatever, that doesn't count. I'm happy to see every single one of you praying for you. I made like, like screenshot of all the names because I couldn't, you know, I wrote them down. But then more names are coming. So thank you so much for watching everyone. And thank you for every great comment. Thank you for all your support. It really, really, really and it encourages me also. So, oh man, I just love this topic that we're on. You know, today I said, hey there, son or daughter. Hey, Sherry. <laughs> you know, I just love this topic because I know it will do you so much good. Because if you understand that you are loved, if you understand who you are, man, you're going to win in life. And that's all I'm about. Hey, Candy. Oh, thank you so, so much for saying that. Hey, Rachel. <laughs> everyone, I give a high five. Thank you, everyone who says hi and always says thank you and always says goodbye. Thank you so much. Truly appreciate that. And all I'm about, let, let's, let me just say it again because I said it a few times uh, during a, a formal live session. But all I'm about is that you win in life. So that I don't have a secret agenda or something. I just want people to win in life. And everything that I went through or that I uh, had a revelation about or whatever kind of thing that the Lord has given me, I'm giving to you. Because if I tell you like um, uh, I told you about that I didn't know the love of God, it's only because I went through it. That's why I can tell you. Hey, hey, Nanda, so great. Oh, hey, Tammy. <laughs> so great, everyone. So that's the only reason that I'm seated here talking about my love, the love of my life, Jesus, of course, and his word, Papa God and Holy Spirit. So, hey, Evelyn, so great to see you. And it's only because I really, 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 really want you to win in life. It's not, I don't have a secret agenda or whatsoever. I truly, truly want you to win in life. And I know that people are winning. Oh, that's my dog. She's so funny. So, <laughs> oh my Lord. But the thing is, uh, I get, I get praise reports from people. So they tell me that I know this lady and I just think she's such a great lady. Um, she had like a spot somewhere. She spoke against it and then it's gone. You know, one moment it was there. Second moment it was gone. So those kind of things, because people are starting to take their authority, understanding who they are. You are not powerless. Let me tell you, you are not powerless. The Lord has given you his authority, has given you everything. Um, my whole, <laughs> everything is shaking because of my dog. <laughs> so he has given it all to you. And if you understand that you are a son, that you are a daughter, oh, life gets so sweet because then you would understand. Hey, Rihanna, so great. How are you, honey? <laughs> so great to see you here. If you understand who you are, no matter, no matter if you are like 90 or 99 or nine, eight, or whatever your age, whatever your color, whatever your background, whatever, what it doesn't matter. You know, I, I love the story of Ruth because this woman was a Moabite. So she came from a different kind of an, uh, uh, people. And then she married um, her husband, Mahlon, but he died and he was a son of Naomi. And Naomi was married, but her husband died. Her son, two sons died. So she was alone with her two uh, daughters-in-law. And the thing about Ruth, she is so great because she had nothing. She came from a, uh, she was a Moabite. She, she was not a Jew. She just followed her uh, mother-in-law, Naomi. And when she got there in Bethlehem, the people were not, you know, loving like, hey, we like you and those kind of things. So she came. She was a foreigner. Her husband died. So she was a widow. Who wants a widow in that time? In that time, widows were like, you know, you were used, you were no good and those kind of things. She had no children. So there were so many things that were wrong, you know, as if, if we look at it. But do you know that this girl, it doesn't say the name Jesus, but she, 
the Boaz that she married, the guy who was one of the richest guy there, he redeemed her. He became her kinsman redeemer. And that is Jesus to us. He is our Goel. That's the kinsman redeemer. And you know, Jesus, he redeemed us. There was no one to redeem, to redeem her because the person who was first in redeeming Ruth, he said, no, no, a Moabite. Oh, no, 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 no. He didn't want her. So she was rejected. She was rejected when she came there in Bethlehem. She was rejected uh, uh, again because he, he didn't want to redeem her. But Boaz, Boaz, he wanted to redeem her. That is love in, a, in such a high form. And that's a picture of Jesus. Well, that was the Old Testament because this Ruth afterwards, he redeemed her. He married her. She got children. So she is, you know, she's named, you know, she got everything. She got wealth. She got all those kind of things that she didn't have before. And she got it because of the kinsman redeemer, Boaz. Now we got Jesus and that was the Old Testament. Let's bring it to the New Testament. You are his son or daughter. You are his beloved son or daughter. You're the one worthy of his love. You are the one he just esteemed. Yes, you in high esteem. You are that one that he loves so much. You are his favorite. Ooh, and he's your kinsman redeemer. I just wish that people would grab this and say, what? He is my kinsman redeemer. He redeemed me just like Ruth. Maybe you had nothing. Maybe you were in lacking. Maybe you were poor. Maybe uh, you were rejected. Whatever the situation, maybe your background wasn't okay. So people don't want you, you know, all those kind of things. But just as Ruth, Jesus redeemed us. And we are now in that new Testament living because Jesus, he said, you know, I'm going to do you even better. You are a beloved son and a beloved daughter. And in you, Papa God is well pleased. So we got an Abba Father who says, well, I love you beyond. Doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter where you come from. Doesn't matter what gender, what race, what age. It doesn't matter your love. And just take that, that you're so loved that someone took the time to redeem you, even though you were rejected. It doesn't matter. He just took you. And said, come here, my dear. And he just holds you like, oh, I love you so much. You know, and then we can, we can feel and hear his heartbeat because he's so, so good. Oh, man, I just love him so much. Well, that's just an intro <laughs> because I wasn't uh, planning to talk about Ruth. But I just love that story of Ruth so much because that woman, she became a someone when Boaz stepped in. Oh, man. Yes. All glory to God. I'm so happy to talk about Papa God. I, Papa, let me, let me just thank you right now. I want to thank you for every son and daughter of you. And I just want to thank you that you're so beautiful, that you're so good. You're such a good Papa God. And thank you, Lord Jesus. We truly value what you did for us on the cross. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And Holy Spirit, thank you that you came. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I just speak that you get a revelation of his love, that you get a revelation of what it means to be that son and daughter of the most high God. And that he's just looking at you. Hey there, son. Hey there, daughter. He just loves you so much. Ooh! I just speak that you get a revelation of that. So because if you get a re revelation of it, all those other things that are not yours, because I already told you, you are a triune being. If you want to know more about that, I got teachings on that. You have a spirit. No, you are a spirit, sorry. You are a spirit. I always tell you, you're a speaking spirit. So that's why you speak. You have a soul. In your soul is your mentality, you know, your mindset, your will, your character, all those kind of things. And you have a body. You live in that body. So you are made up of three parts. And I always like that because Papa God is three in one. So he made us also like that. And everything, not everything, but most of the things, they got three parts to it. So when you look to an egg, you go and you break the egg, you see the shell, then you see the white, and then you see the, the egg yolk, you know, three parts. And a plant, you know, you got the leaves, you got the stem, and then you got the roots. Three parts. So I like that. So we are also made up of three parts. Now, what happened when you said yes to Jesus in that moment, that old nature, you know, 
that spirit had an old nature and it was subject, it was slave to Satan because it was an old nature. So that old nature, it just got replaced in a second, I think even less than a second. And Jesus came to live on the inside of you. You got a new nature. That's why I was talking about you are a new creation. You are unique. You are unique. Don't you think it's so funny that when children are bullied, they're bullied uh, uh, because of the way they are or what they are look like or what they are wearing. You know, those bullies, they always pick on those children, but it's only because every one of us is unique. So maybe you did not like the way you, you were, uh, 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 the way you looked, uh, your color or your hair or your eyes or your teeth or your ears or all those kind of things. But you are unique and you are unique in your spirit. So the devil always tries to get us to look into the natural realm. So that's why the bullies are saying, oh, I don't like your nose. She's got a big nose. You know, those kind of things. Oh, look at the hair. No, no, no. And they make a song of it and those kind of things. But don't you see what the devil is doing? It's also. Of course, his agenda that if he can get you to look at yourself, your natural self, so that body, you won't see that uniqueness. You don't see your real, the real you, your spirit that is just perfect. It's got everything and it's good. You're so good. So that's why uh, Satan always tries to bring trauma in those kind of areas. You know, to reject you and say, then people at school, uh, they say, we don't want you in our team. And then there you are standing all alone. No one wants you, but you are unique on the inside. Okay. So when you said yes to Jesus, immediately you got a new nature and there is where you became a new creation and you are a new creation and there will never, ever be someone like you. Never, ever. So even when you got a certain kind of talent, uh, sports talent, or maybe you can sing or uh, whatever kind of talent, dancing, uh, arts or whatever, that talent, even though there are like 100,000 dancers, still you are unique in your talent. If you are an author, a writer, still you are unique in what you are writing because there are so many people waiting for your uniqueness to step out to be seen so they can look into your book and say I was waiting for someone to tell me this or look at you dancing and saying hey if she can dance I can dance also you know those kind of things but because we don't see ourselves as that son a beloved son or daughter of Papa God who's just so unique and there's no one like us then we think yeah but I was teased as a child. I was bullied. I was rejected. No one wants me. Yet that's why I'm still single. Because, you know, when when men look at me, they think, "Mm, no. Or they swipe left or something. You know, or if if women look at me, then I'm, "Mm, I'm not, yeah, I'm not that. But the thing is, (laughs) the real you is so unique. And yes, people will say, but Cindy, they look at the outside. Yes, I know, but still. It all comes from the inside out because as you think in your heart, that's the way you are. So I even had so many because I speak to so many people and I always like, hey, Bali, hey, Stephanie, hey, Elva. (laughs) So great to see you all. So what um, I was talking about something. (laughs) Sorry, got distracted. But here's the thing. You are unique. What was I talking about, guys? I want to say something. Yeah, I was talking about, I I, I talked to so many people and sometimes I, I, I like talking to men. So I have a group of men and I talk and I ask questions. Why are you like this? Why do you do this? And also with women, because I want to hear. And I always, with Proverbs, you get so much wisdom. And then one guy said, you know, do you know, a woman can, can, uh, come into a room and she's just so secure And even though if I would look at her and she's not my type or I don't like uh, that type of woman, still she, she attracts me something. It just pulls on my attention. But if a woman, even beautiful and whatever, and she steps into a room, but she's so insecure, she thinks, you know, on a small about herself, 
it's like, mm, I don't really know. You know, there, even because there's something on the inside, it comes out on the outside. And the thing is that a lot of Christians, when we step into a room, we don't step in with a certainty who we are. I am a daughter of the Most High God. So you step in. I am one of the king, queen, of course, but king, one of the king of the king of kings, but we don't step in a room like that. We don't wake up like that. We wake up thinking, oh, it's just another day, just me. I got nothing to offer this world. Well, I'm sick. I'm lacking. Got no talent, nothing. You know, that's how we wake up. That's how we go by our day. That's how people go to school, go to their job, you know, like, mm, I'm just nothing. <laughs> Looking at my dog. So no, you see, but actually, you know, we have a king here in the Netherlands and I can bet you when he wakes up, he doesn't have to pump himself and say, okay, I'm a king. Oh, I'm a king. Ah, I am a king. I'm king. I'm king. I'm king. And then he wakes up his, his wife. Okay, honey, tell me, tell me, tell me some more. I'm a king. Yes. Tell me that I'm a king. Okay. Okay. I'm a king, 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 king. I'm a king, I'm a king, I'm a king. He will never do that. He knows he, he was born into that royal family. He is the king. He's the king here. He is just the king. When he steps outside, he's the king. When he goes to bed, he's the king. When he wakes up, he's the king. He just knows that it's just, it's just who he is. It's part of, it's just part of him. When he steps outside, you know, there are the protectors. He got butlers and all those people, but there are people to protect him. And we as children of God, hey Shelly, we as children of God, we think so small of ourselves, so small. We think, no, he, I, I don't think he means me, his beloved. I'm, I'm not worthy of his love. No, 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 I'm not a king. No, no, Cindy is saying that, but no, 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 no. But you are a, a triune being. You got a new nature and now you carry special cargo. You got Jesus living on the inside of me. Papa God sent for the spirit of his son into our hearts. And that's why we can cry out, Abba, Papa. You know, we're no longer slaves. We're no longer slaves to Satan. So that's why we have a choice. We can say no to fear. No to sin. No to addiction. No to stress. Because I am a king. I am a daughter of the most high God. You are a son or a daughter of the most high God. So I want to show that to you. And that you have a picture of it. Just picture yourself. Picture a king that needs to be told that he's a king. But he is the king. He was born into that family. He was just born like that. Now you are just born like that. Because you are a newborn creation. So you are born a king, a queen, a son, a daughter, and even a beloved. Because Papa always, you know, he always got more than enough. He's a God of more than enough. And if you would understand that, things would shift in your life because then you would understand And Wait a minute. He would never, ever keep me sick. Why would he? Why would he keep me sick? What is it with me that he does not want to heal me? Just ask yourself that question if you're sick or if you're lacking or poor. Just ask yourself, why? Would this God keep me poor? Why would he? He wouldn't because he already gave us everything richly to enjoy. But the thing is, because we are looking in the natural realm. So we are looking, we are trying being, but a lot of Christians, they never ever think about, or sometimes they, they don't think about that spirit being that they are. They only see, well, I did this wrong. I cannot do this. I'm a type A. I'm a type B. I got ADHD. I got OCD, D, 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 and all those kind of things. That's who I am. I'm sick. I got cancer. That's who I am. I'm ugly. That's who I am. This is that. No, that's not who you are. That's a lie from Satan. But you're looking in the natural realm. You're looking at the wrong realm. You need to come up higher because you are seated. At the right hand of Papa God, you are in Christ Jesus. Do you know that? I, I'm not screaming and yelling today because I really need you to understand this. That's why I'm just, I am like a teacher because I also went through it. But 
the moment I understood it, things shifted and changed in my life. I knew that I was protected. How, how did I know? Because I looked spiritually now. I am a speaking spirit. And I saw that Papa God said, well, I have given my angels charge over you, Cindy. Wow. Then you really love me. So, okay. I understood I wasn't cursed. I was blessed. Hey, Galatians 3.13. Jesus, he, he took that curse away from me. You know, he became that on the cross. So everything changed. But I had to see things spiritually because this Bible, this word, yes, we can read it in the natural, but we believe it here on the inside. So it's spiritual food. It's spiritual word. It's a spiritual, there are spiritual promises that we need to take. And I told you how you can take it. You take it with your mouth. So if you are someone and it's difficult for you to understand that you are loved, so deeply loved. I love it how Joseph Prince always said, he's, he says, you're deeply loved. So you're deeply loved, you know, you're the beloved, the one worthy of his love. If you got issues with that because of trauma or things that happened in the past, just like I had, or if you don't understand that you are supposed to be prosperous because the Lord said in his word, Psalms 35, 27, he delights in your prosperity. He just delights in it. And, he, and in Philippians 4, 19, he says, well, I've already supplied all of your needs according to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So everything is through the cross. That's why we rest in that finished work. Jesus already did it all. And then he gave it to us. But how can you give something to a son, a beloved son or beloved daughter if they got issue with it? Then they cannot take it because here's Papa God telling me, Cindy, you are prosperous. And he tries to give me this. So this is my hand this is Papa God's hand. And then he tries to give me, Cindy, something because he told me, Cindy, I made you prosperous. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. It's too expensive. You keep it. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. You keep it. No, it's fine that I just have enough food to eat for today. It's okay. I don't need a spacious house. It's okay. My children, they don't need to be adequately fed and those kind of things. It's okay. No, 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 no. Don't give me too much money, Papa God. Don't, don't. Uh, Then, well, maybe then I just give one euro. That's okay. No, no, no. Because I have an issue with it. I don't understand that that prosperity is mine, but a son or daughter, and let me tell you about my sons and daughters. Well, my, my daughter, she's like that. Even if I would tell her, um, uh, honey, can, shall I give you like, let's say 20 euros? She's like, okay, mom. <laughs> and you know what happened one, one day I wanted to pay someone because they, they did something for me. So I wanted to pay. I said, can you give me, can you please give me your bank uh, details? Then I can uh, send you the money. And the person said, no, 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 I don't want the payment. I, I just wanted to do this for you. I said, but I really want to pay you. I don't, I don't want it for free. I want to pay you. And it was like a back and forth. And my daughter was seated here. She said, well, I, I can take it. <laughs> you know, she was like, you can give it to me. She doesn't want it because she's bold like that. She's my daughter. She's like, she's bold like that. You know what she did? She sent me a text message and we call it Tiki here. I don't know what the name is uh, over there, but she sent me uh, 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 an app. Can you pay me? And she said, (laughs) so she just said, she just thought I'm bold like that. And you know, I thought that was so good of her. She was just bold. She wasn't like me. Uh, No, no, no. A real son or daughter would say, thank you, Papa. That's so great. What do you want me to do with it? Do you see what's happening now? Now I understand. He wants me to do something with that prosperity or with the wealth or with the riches. But if I just, no, no, no. And the same is with healing. Because the thing is that the moment you got saved, you got that new nature. Jesus came to live on the inside of you. But the the salvation, you didn't fast for it. You didn't read your Bible. You didn't confess the word. What did you do when you got saved? You said a few words, but there was something in your heart. You never saw Jesus with your eyes. You know, you never saw him standing in front of you like the disciples did. But something, you heard something and this faith just rose up on the inside and you just had this urge. Yes, yes, 
Jesus, I want that Jesus. And then you are maybe led into a, 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 a sinner's prayer is how, what they call it. And then you became a child of God. So if I would tell you now, no, nope, you're not saved. You would look at me strange like, this girl, she's, she's so crazy. Cindy, I got saved and you can even on a, a name the date when you got saved. And you can tell me, well, I'm saved for 20 years. Well, I'm saved for 40 years because you know that it's something that was special to you. But do you know on that same day, that same moment, you got healed, you got delivered, you got prospered, you got wealthy, you got rich, you got everything, you got everything, you got the protection, security, safety, every single thing that you would have need of, you got the joy in fulfillment, you got peace, love, you know, every single thing you got faith. You got that all already that same exact day. But for us, because we look into the natural realm, the realm where Satan tries to pull your eyes to like, look down, look down, look to dust, look to dust, look down. But that's not the way we need to look. We always have to look up because that is how a king is walking, looking up, head straight. You know, the Bible tells us, and I keep your eyelids right before you. Why? Because he doesn't want you to look down. The devil wants you to look down. You're seated at the right hand of God. That means you're on a throne and Satan is underneath your feet. Those spirits are underneath your feet. Poverty, lack, it's underneath your feet. Sickness, disease, illnesses, they're underneath your feet. Insecurity, stress, fear, anxiety, depression, they're under your feet and you're seated next to Papa God. And then you can say, Papa, and he says, yes. Oh man, if you picture it like that. So you are seated up high. Never look down again. There's no need for that. You are that beloved son and daughter of Papa God in whom is so well pleased. And the thing is, if you can receive everything at, with salvation and it was so easy, the health and the healing, it's also easy. So when people ask me, how long did it take you? It took me long because of everything that I told you yesterday, because of the thoughts, the dominant thoughts that I had. But I could be healed one second because the healing was already living on the inside of me. I'm giving you a picture of you seated next to Papa God, seated in Christ. But the picture is here on earth that is Papa God and Jesus, they live on the inside of you. And your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit, he lives on the inside of you. So you, got, you carry that special cargo. And it looks so strange when we carry that special cargo here because we are ambassadors. We are citizens of heaven, but we're here in the world. We're not of the world, but we are in this world. And Jesus prayed for us that the evil one could not touch us. You know, he sanctified himself. So, so we also are sanctified. And this is, if you can gra grasp that, that that is true, that I'm not telling you rubbish, but it's really true. Do you know you can get healed like in a second? But it's our mind that needs to be renewed. And that is the only thing. Because Papa God, he already made everything available to us. You know, he just loves us so much. Jesus, he went through the whole horror story. Well, I say it's a horror story that he went through. And he did it for you. He did it for us. Holy Spirit, he came to live on the inside of us. You know why? Because in the Old Testament, Jesus wasn't living. He wasn't even mentioned as Jesus. Yes, by the prophet, because everything must be spoken in, must be prophesied. So that's why the prophet spoke about Jesus. And that's why Jesus could come. But Jesus wasn't living on the inside of no one. Papa wasn't living on the inside of no one. Holy Spirit couldn't live on the inside of a human being. They were clothed. They had this mantle. That's why Elijah, he had a mantle. And when Elisha wanted that mantle, he wanted a double portion. Elijah said, if you can see that I'm, you know, picked up to heaven and you can see that, that's when you can get that double portion, that mantle of mine. Because it was just a mantle. But now we got more than that. They are living on the inside of us. But do you know, guys? A lot of us, we don't understand who we are in Christ. We don't understand that we are so loved, so loved. Do you know that Jesus, he understood that he was loved because of those words of Papa God. 
This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And he started his uh, ministry. And you know why he was so bold and so courageous and the way he spoke and the authority? Because he knew I'm loved. My papa, he loves me. I got a papa who loves me. And I told you yesterday, I had to learn those kind of things. But I had to, I took it from the word, of course. Well, it just settled that for me. I don't have a papa here around me. So you're my papa. What are you telling me? So I have to get into, into the word. So when I got to John 14 and Jesus said, if you have seen me, then you also seen the father. What? That's great. So everything Jesus did is the way Papa is. Everything Jesus said is what Papa would say. So I knew and I understood the Papa. I knew who my Papa was and I was his daughter. Then I'm just like him and you are just like him. Unique. You are so unique because you're just like Papa God. So I really, 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 yes, you're deeply loved. I love it when people take it and and just speak it over yourself right now. I cannot hear you, but you just make a choice. I always tell people, you make the choice. I can be the best coach, fitness coach, for instance, and I can give you the tips, the tricks, and you want a, you know, a app or a, a, a beach body. If you don't do the exercises, if you don't follow up on those tips and those tricks and those kind of things, you will never have that body. You will never uh, lose the weight. So, It's the choice that you make. Every person who watches, who listens, you make the choice. I cannot make the choices for you. You can listen and listen and listen and listen and listen and listen to me and still think, oh, I'm a nobody. Well, I taught you. Well, I I tell you, you are unique. You are special. You're, You're so, how do you say, deeply loved. You're worthy of his love, but you choose. So can you please do it with me? And now... I know you're looking at me. I cannot see your faces, but then you speak over yourself. I, and then you say your name. I am worthy of his love. I am so loved. I am lovable. I am so loved. I am so worthy of his love. I'm so lovable. You know, you can, you can say it how you want to say it. I just need you to to make a decision to understand that you are loved and you are a son or a daughter of the Most High God. And the one whom he loves, he will never, ever let you fall. He's, He's in covenant with us through Jesus. You know, the devil, he has his bag of tricks. We know that. And he does it the same, the same he did in the in the garden with Eve. He always tries to get your focus, get your attention, get everything, you know, your imagination and point it down, point it downwards. He always shows you the things that you cannot do, the the things that you're not good enough at, the things that you have not done, that you should have done. You know, he always finds fault with you. And if you look at those things, then yes, you will find fault. Yes, you know. I, I can do things so terribly wrong. Yes, I can. Because I'm, I'm Cindy. I can do things wrong. But the moment I see myself in the word again, and that's what I mean with looking spiritually with your spiritual eyes, with your eyes of faith, being spiritually minded, it brings life and peace. Then I go into the word, into Romans 8, 1, and I say, but there is therefore now no condemnation for me. Right, Papa? Thank you so much. There's no condemnation for me. I don't have to slap myself and say, why didn't you do that right? Don't you see what you did wrong? There's no room for that no more. I say, Papa, thank you. I don't walk according to the flesh. I walk according to the spirit. And that law of the spirit of life, oh man, it's now busy working on the inside of me. You know, that's who we are. And if I did something wrong, I will repent. And I will say, Papa, Please forgive me if I've done something wrong to someone. I will say, I'm so sorry. If I don't know, then I don't know. But if I know about it, I will say I'm sorry because then I hurt someone else. So that's also something because uh, there are also Christians. They take this and they say, well, it's all grace. So if I hurt you, if I murdered your child, if I did it, it's grace. Yes, it's grace. But it's also just like Jesus he would have said, I'm so sorry that I did that. But he was, he, he never, you know, he, 
it's no you how to say that he can never say that because he never does anything wrong he never ever and even when people did him wrong on the cross you know what he said oh papa forgive them for they know not what they are doing so when we forgive people we're just the same as jesus just the same So that's why you got all the love already stored on the inside of you. So you can forgive people easily because it's not even my love I'm using. I'm using his love so I can love everyone. But if I make a mistake and if I hurt someone, then I I have to say, I'm so sorry that I did that. And if the person doesn't want to accept my apology, that's also okay. It's okay. But I I did my part. I said, I'm so sorry that I did that wrong or I didn't look to you or I didn't, you know, That's, that's just like Jesus would have done it. The thing that I just want to drop now at Life at Five is that you are so loved. Don't let that talking snake talk you out of that. No matter what you've done, no matter where you are in life right now, no matter what age you have and you think, I haven't made nothing of my life. It's never too late. It's never, ever too late. So I just want to and, um, give that to you. You are in your spirit so perfect because Jesus is there. You got that new nature. You're a unique new creation. There will never ever be someone before you or after you. So that's why we never ever think about quitting, giving up and uh, killing ourselves or doing those kind of things because Papa God, he placed everything that you and I would need on the inside of us. When I understood that that fear that I had, fear of people, uh, people pleasing, uh, uh, stressing about whatever, thinking that I, I had low self-esteem and all those kind of things. When I saw, hey, wait a minute. Those kind of things are not from my Papa God. It cannot be who I am because I'm made in his image and in his likeness. So how can I be those kind of things? Get away from me. You're not mine. And then you look at the other things. Oh, yes, I'm loved. Oh, yes, I'm made in his image and likeness. So I am so beautiful. I'm so handsome. If you're a man, you can say that. Oh, yes, I'm talented. Oh, yes, I'm good enough. Oh, even if people reject you, you can say, doesn't matter. Papa loves me. You know, those kind of things. Well, I cannot go on lengthy today because I have a rehearsal. So I'm going to leave it at this. But really, people, open up your heart and make the choice just the way, the same way as you got saved. It's the same way you can receive that healing. You can receive because already on the inside, you can receive your prosperity. You can receive whatever you need to receive, whatever your situation is. And it's only there in your heart. When you open up your heart, you will see, you will confess it with your mouth. You will speak it. And then you will say, I am loved. I am fun to be around with. I am welcomed. I, you know, I'm not a black sheep. No, I'm a black sheep. I'm a white sheep. You know, those kind of things. You start thinking about yourself differently. See yourself as that king. Hold your head up. Hold your head up right now. Hold your head up. Don't tilt your head down. Hold it up. You know, set your shoulders straight. You are a king of the king of kings. Yes, I'm going to leave it at this. So let me see. Yes, they're under your feet. That's great. Woohoo! Because those things are under our feet. Let me just have a look if someone uh, asks a question. We have seen the Father as a perfect and holy and full of love for us always. That's right. Because that's just how he is. And it lives on the inside of us. People, Do you, really, you are special. You are so special. I wish I could just open up your minds, place that in. But I can't. So I just speak that you get so blessed by these words that even when you fall asleep, you will whisper, I am so loved. I am so loved. Oh man, thank you so much for watching. I have to go. Let me see. Yes, hold your head up in every situation. No matter what it is. No matter what kind of rejection. What You are the king of, one of the kings of the king of kings. You know, that's you. You are unique. You are so loved. Guys, I just love this topic. I, I really want to go on and on about it. But I will see you tomorrow with more on this. And you just start saying it. eh? Let me give you an assignment because 
a lot of times I don't give assignments, but as a life transformation coach, let me give you that assignment. You go and you speak to yourself in the mirror when no, one's, when no one is around so that they don't think that you're crazy. And you speak to yourself and just say, I don't know what your situation is, but if you think that you're ugly, you say, I'm beautiful. And there's scripture for that. In Song of Songs, there's scripture for that. If you don't like your voice, then you speak, I love my voice. You know why? Because Papa God loves your voice. He made you in his image and likeness, so you're pretty good. So you just tell yourself, I'm good enough. There's no condemnation for me. I give you this assignment. So you go and do that. Speak to yourself in the mirror, talking that you're righteous because you're righteous in Christ. Talking that you're beautiful, talking that you're nice, talking you're fun to be around with, welcome, lovely, lovable, whatever is your situation, yes? Okay, and I will talk to you tomorrow. I will ask tomorrow who, done, who has done that and what it did on the inside. Okay, hold your head up high. I'm going to wave at you. I don't want to let go, but I have to go. <laughs> so I see you tomorrow. Oh, man. Oh, did she say something? Rosa. Okay, well, I, I will go on Messenger. Yes, okay. Okay, bye-bye everyone. I'm going to see you tomorrow with more on this topic that you are beloved son or daughter of the Lord. Yes? Okay, see you tomorrow, guys. Bye-bye. Love you. High five to you all. <laughs> bye-bye.